Right, Jeremy, our target's Tench. Yeah. I think I, purely, because it's less of a walk, I'm going <laughs> to stay around here. I've seen a few, the odd fish, the odd bubble, yeah. near this set of pads. Do you reckon it's worth us splitting up? Maybe you find yeah, another Yeah, I mean, there's lots of spots here, aren't there? So this looks nice, I have to say, but I think further up, it's always like the, you know, the grass looks greener <laughs> sort of round the corner, doesn't it? So, or the water looks more bubbly. For, uh, for, I, I'm going to go up there and have a look. Okay, perfect. Um, so if you go up there, I'll fish here and we'll reconvene and compare notes, shall we, mate? Sounds, sounds good. What do we, yeah, we've got, yeah, we're coming into sort of midday, early afternoon, aren't we? So yeah, just get sort of warmed up and, uh, We'll see what Flex happens. the rod arm, get it ready for later, hopefully. Fingers crossed we can yeah. find an oblige intention or two. Yeah. Let's Great stuff. It. All right, see I'll soon. see you later. Right, I like the look of this spot here, partly because I can see little tiny bubbles coming up. Uh, not very many, but it's just, yeah, in the middle of these pads. But from here, Anything sizable is going to have to come through this rather tricky channel, so I think I might, I might go there just to get a bit more of a commanding position. Assuming, yeah, I think that spot there is for me. Oh, oh, that was a bite. That's a bite. Uh, it's about 1975 or something, maybe. Uh, or no, maybe maybe eight. We have a bite here. It's, it's just a slight, um, a slight bob. Um, so just doing some subtracting in my head. It's at least. Of, of, uh, it's at least 45 years old. I suppose I'm really waiting for it to sort of sail away. It didn't quite do that. Ah, something's had one of the corn. That's, um, that's interesting. There were two on there. Hassan might have caught something. I saw a bit of a, a bit of a splash, something in the water in front of his swim. So 
Gonna go and check that out. Well, turns out I'm fishing in Bream Bay by the looks of it near these lilies. Not the intended species, but if I had to catch a bream, I think on the float is the way. I'm gonna slip him back, and hopefully the bream lead the swim and we can maybe get a tench after all. Hassan has caught a couple of bream and they've now moved into my swim. But at least it's good to be, uh, to feel a bend in the rod. And we're getting close to tench time, I think, with any luck. There is something totally hypnotic about watching a float. So, um, that thing about men not being able to multitask, I think anglers, I mean, talking and keeping an eye on the float at the same time, you need very special eyeball muscles. I can't do that, so I'm gonna have to back and forth a little bit. But um, this takes me right back to when I was a kid. This is what I used to do, stare at a float. And it's something I don't do very much these days. I've done all sorts of crazy stuff in the last, uh, gosh, what are we talking? 20 plus years all over the place, all sorts of crazy techniques, very heavy gear often. But this still holds such power. Just, just uh, you know, a, a, a British lake, nice calm, dark water and that little coloured thing just a fraction of an inch above it and you're just waiting for it to, to move. And it's been, I've been here a few hours now and it's, it's a couple of times it's quickly gone under and there's been nothing there. It's looked like small fish. Um, so frustration, I think, summed up this afternoon and a lot of fishing is about frustration, but it's about working through that. Uh, I knew that wasn't, you know, that's not the, the best time of day. Um, we're now moving into the evening, which is why I'm, you know, even after all that time, I'm now just totally locked onto that. It's just sat on the edge of a lily pad there. But you can't really get a better kind of place to, to watch a float than here. I'm off to Tench. I've just caught a, caught a bream. There's silverfish in here, roach, rudd. Trying to avoid those, but I mean, you know, a great place to bring, you know, somebody who's learning to fish or wants to learn to fish, but doesn't know what to do. This, this would be the ideal kind of place. Um, put some maggots on and those smaller fish are going to come in and you're going to, you know, those reflexes will be engaged and who knows where that might lead. I mean, with me, it started off with something that size. And as soon as, you know, it's very hard to explain to people who don't fish what it is exactly. You almost need to, you have to experience it. But once you experience it, that leads to, you know, there's got to be other kinds of fish down here. There's got to be bigger fish. There's got to be other places. And there's just, there is just no end to it. I mean, in my case, it's still, it's still a journey that I'm on. It's still progressing but really nice to um, re- ah! <laughs> Float suddenly shot, it went under, but there was, there was nothing there. There was nothing there. So I, you know, a moment, of, uh, a moment of emotion, but I think if that had been a decent fish, that would have been a bend in the rod. So it wasn't there, but, um, and that's the thing about the fishing. It's, you know, you can, people, you, people say you must have tremendous patience. You're just sitting there for hours and hours and hours and nothing's happening. Don't you get bored? And if you're bored, you're doing it wrong. It's, it's, it's a very hard state of mind to, to describe, but it's almost like a, you're, you are in a perpetual state of anticipation. Something could happen literally at, at any moment. And that something could be, you know, it could be a better, bigger fish than you've ever caught before. Um, so it's that, you know, there's just no end to the fascination. Now, I'll see if I can get this out without landing it. I want it very close to that lily pad, but not in it. There we go. 
sink the line because that's not too much drift at the moment. It's, I want it to stay in one place and not move off. not really happening here um, so you know there's a bit of prime time left so I reckon I'm gonna try I'm gonna move and see if I can find some more signs of fish well my sleeves are testament to the fact that the couple of hours I've spent in this swim has proved nothing but full of bream. No tension, fortunately. I have seen Jeremy go down the bank the other end, where hopefully there are some more tension. We've certainly seen a few roll in. And I'm gonna spend the rest of the evening with him in his swim, talking to him, hopefully not chewing his ear off too much, and hopefully, just hopefully, with a tension or two. Ham Green Lakes is a beautiful, stunning, mature complex of lakes nestling in the countryside not too far from Bristol. The complex itself consists of two different lakes. The top lake being a historic 300 year old estate lake. It's lily pad lined. There's all sorts of options in terms of fishing. The stock majority of it is tench and bream with a small head of really old carp. Perfect for float fishing on those long summer evenings or chucking a little feeder out. The other lake on the complex, the front lake, is smaller in size and has a really good head of carp. All different types of strains, including some really old, ancient, special fish that hopefully you'll be lucky enough to capture. In that lake also, there is some tench and plenty of silverfish to be caught as well. So whatever your angling ability, whatever your preferred method and style of angling, there's something to offer you on this beautiful complex. We worked very hard for that. Is that a male one? That's a male, isn't it? That's yeah, that's it. yeah, yeah. That's, um, that's probably why we fought so hard. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well done. Well, it's taken some time, hasn't it? Just a bit. But I'm glad to get one. I think it must be the light levels. That sun's just yes. dipped behind the horizon, yes, hasn't it? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. A little few pinprick bubbles came up, and then yeah. it slid away. Textbook. Yeah. Negated some pads, not very skillfully. More luck than judgment. And there he is. Lovely. Beautiful. Well, that is a very hard earned ham green tench indeed. We've moved round to this end of the lake. It started fizzing, but I think the key factor was the sun just dipped behind the trees and that lower light level has got these tinkers on the feed. That's number one. Hopefully, we're getting back, we can get a few more, including one for Jeremy.
Well, it's pretty much dark now. Uh, time to go home. Didn't happen with the tench, um, but that's fishing. That's why we keep coming back. Uh, but lovely place to spend a day. And uh, I think I'll be back.